In this video, we are going to show you how to install Swanstone bath walls to create your very own Swanstone shower. Before you begin, refer to the instruction manual and care instructions for important safety guidelines. Your instruction manual can be found on swanstone.com. You will need the following tools to install your Swanstone shower enclosure. You will need three saws, a circular saw with a 60 to 80 tooth carbide blade, a 14 tooth per inch saber saw with bimetal blade, a hole saw to install the shower or faucet head, and also the following tools, safety glasses, a drill and drywall screws, a pencil, a measuring tape, masking tape, a level, a builder square, caulking gun, and 100% silicone sealant, denatured alcohol, and clean towels. Also, optional tools include 2x4 lumber as required for bracing, or an industrial grade hot glue gun and glue sticks. One of the great features of Swanstone is there are many different surfaces you can adhere the bath wall panels to, such as drywall, moisture resistant board, cement board, concrete, old tile, marine grade plywood, or plaster. Refer to the installation instructions for more tips on installing to these different types of substrates. When you receive your Swanstone product, store the panels in a flat area to avoid damage. Use care when opening and be sure to inspect the product before you begin. When unpacking, look for the production marker on the one side of the wall panel. This identifies this side to be installed against the subwall. Now you're ready to install your Swanstone bath wall panels. Using a builder square, make sure the shower base is even to the side walls. If the walls are out of square, the bottom of the panels may need to be cut to follow the contour of the shower floor. If the shower floor is not level to the wall, use a level to draw a line around the three walls. Measure the distance from the line to the top of the shower base. Transfer these measurements to both side panels and back panel. Add masking tape to the panels and cut the bottom of all panels. If the back panel must be cut from side to side to fit the opening, find the mark in the center of the back wall Place the panel finished side facing up on a flat surface. Using a pencil, lightly mark the center of the back panel. Take several measurements bottom to top from the center line to each wall surface. These measurements will ensure the back panel fits exactly contour to the two side walls. The back panel can be cut slightly smaller than the opening because the side panels will cover any small gap less than a quarter of an inch. Also, Cutting the side panel precisely to fit the back wall is not necessary if using corner molds. Cut the panel using the circular or saber saw. Next, dry fit the back panel and make any necessary adjustments. Now you are ready for the panel installation. Clean the backs of each panel with denatured alcohol or another non-oil based solvent. This will ensure a proper adhesion between the wall surface and the substrate. Apply silicone in two to three inch circles every six to eight inches across the surface of the panel. This will create a suction factor when pressing the panels firmly to the wall. Firmly press the surface of the panel against the wall. It is important to apply hand pressure to the entire surface of the panel to make sure the bond is secure to the surface of the wall. Temporarily secure the back panel to the wall in order to properly fit the front and rear panels. Place the panel on top of the shower base and slide it against the back wall panel. Mark the panel's cut line. If the panel is wider than the wall, take the width into consideration when marking the wall panel. Cut the panel using a circular saw or saber saw. Measure the openings for the shower controls and shower head. Transfer the measurements to the panel. Then cut clearance holes using a hole saw. Drill or cut from the finished side of the panel for best results. When drilling, place a piece of scrap wood beneath the hole to ensure a clean cut, or cut from one side, then flip the panel and cut clean through the other side. Then continue to install left panel and the right side panel. Remember the finished edge should face out on each side panel. Now we need to create a temporary bracing structure to hold the panels in place, allowing the silicone to cure. Place two or three two x four pieces against the back wall 
Use two two by four for shower smaller than 48 inches and three two by four for a larger shower than 48 inches wide. Place the two braces against each left and right side wall. Wedge the three horizontal two by four braces, six total against the left and right wall braces. Insert small blocks between the front to rear panel braces and the back panel. These will apply pressure to the back panel and hold it in place. After 24 hours, remove the bracing and you are now ready to install your soap shells. Installing the corner molds is optional. If however there are gaps between the back and side panels, the corner moldings will need to be installed. Hold the soap shelf in position and measure the corner mold from the floor to the bottom side of the soap shelf. A height of at least 43 inches from the shower floor is recommended. Once the length of the corner mold beneath the soap shelf has been determined, both lower corner moldings can be installed to give you a ledge to install the soap shelves. After marking the height, measure and cut corner moldings to length, dry fit the corner moldings and make adjustments as necessary. Clean the surface of the panels and the back of the moldings with denatured alcohol or another non-oil based solvent. Apply a quarter inch bead in the wall gap behind where the corner molding would be applied and then press into place. Dry fit the soap dish. The soap shelf may require sanding. You can use a 60 grit or coarse grit sandpaper to achieve the perfect fit. Apply silicone to the edge of the soap shelf. Align the soap shelf. Hold the soap shelf securely in place and wipe off excess silicone. Temporarily secure the soap shelf with masking tape. Remove the tape after two hours. Do not use for at least 24 hours. As a final step, you are now ready to do the final caulking. Apply the color coordinated or 100% silicone sealant to all the inside and exterior seams. To remove excess caulk, there are caulking tools available, but a credit card or plastic gift card edge will work as well. Now you have installed your very own Swanstone shower, which you will enjoy for years to come. For more installation tips, information, and caring and cleaning your new Swanstone shower, visit swanstone.com.